decision making. And Dan Kim, when I sat here and I thought about this last night, because the first thing that you do is you say, oh, he made stupid decisions. Hindsight's 2020. You should have taken the points, right? At the end, it could have helped you. You shouldn't have gone for those two fourth downs. But I, I go back and look at it, and this is just who the Lions are. Like, this is what they did the whole year. So, because it, it, Dan Campbell and Dan Lanning, apparently if you're a coach and your name's Dan, it's a full send every time. The card says one thing, screw it, go for it. That's what it says. But when I look at, at the Lions and the way they went about their business, would you change your stripes at the end and kind of go against what you've done all year, which has been uber aggressive when it's fourth and short, go for it, even when the field goal is there for the taking? And, and I want to say yes, I, and you heard Jared Goff in the postgame say, that's who we are, like, we're going to go for it. You go there, we win the game. But man, I just, don't, I just don't know how you don't take the points mm. in at least one of those situations, yeah. in at least one of them. But I can understand this is how you built the ship. This is how you steer the ship. I, I just want to know, David, and again, looking back on it, when you don't get it, it's always easier. But man, what happened to just taking the points, mm-hmm. man? It's a, like, oh. why are we getting so cute? Like, just to the point where it's it's just the most diabolical thing you can choose to do it. Take the points, dog. It's like the Falcons in the second half of that Super Bowl. I mean, it's run the ball. Like, what? Yeah. sometimes the simplest answer is the best one. You don't have to overthink it. But, I, I mean, it's kind of who the Lions were. All right, yeah, you just covered a lot of ground. So I'll, I'll start with the Lions first. At least if you're a Lions fan, you can say, all right, we, Dan Campbell didn't panic in the biggest moment. He did what got us here, right? He did what, now the first one to me, you have to kick the field goal. The one where you're already up 14. Uh, kick the field goal. Uh, like it's take, three scores. Take the points, like at some point, and like, it's all based off percentages, right? Because if you get that, all of us are talking about how great he is and, and, and you know, gutsy and brave and all that kind of stuff. And if you don't get it, then everyone's saying this is the stupidest move ever. Too often, we just wait to see what the result was to say whether it was a good decision or not. Yeah. That's why I try and say in the moment, like, no, the percentages, like, you need to take the points here. The second one, when you're already down three and it's fourth and two, I'm like, okay, your offense is the, the, the strength of your team. Your defense hasn't stopped anybody for the past four, four drives. And you had him open on the mesh concept. They had the yeah. tight end open. It, it, it's, it's zone. Hit him on the mesh concept and get the first down. But the first one to me is where you have to kick the field. Yeah, I don't think Dan Campbell's ever laid up in his life. Never. There's He's no way. Cup. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Give me the driver. I'd rather you scre- hit the gas pedal and scream America and go out shooting and go out fighting than, you know. The other way. I mean, I'll take that any time of the day. Dane Campbell, you're playing with house money, buddy. You're playing with house money. But, kind but, of, you kind can of, cook, but you're upset. You can know you're, you can, no, you can you're not a 17 point not lead. Like, if you want. Not at this point. You were, but you can't blow yeah. a 17 point no. lead no. to go to the Super Bowl. No. That it's at this point. Like if you were trailing the whole game. At this you point, know, maybe. yeah, the house money argument's dead. You made it the conference championship game. When you win the first game, like Texans going the Browns, house money. I get it, right? Lions' first playoff game in a long time. You are at home. You can make that argument. And the way you won, the way the Lions have won all year, including beating the Chiefs the first week of the season, I know they had some injuries. Like, now everybody's believing. Now you're expected to win, and you're up. You're up big. I I agree with you 100%, David. Going from 14 to 17 is massive because it does change the thinking, obviously, of the team you're playing. You may get them to abandon the run. You you may get them to abandon the run. Which San Francisco, to their credit, now, never did. Yeah, now it is legitimately three scores. Mm-hmm. You can score two touchdowns, get both two-point conversions, and you're still a point behind. That changes the way the other team has to operate, mm-hmm. right? It may, may you know, they may have to kick an onside kick even earlier or, or waste timeouts yeah. even earlier. It just, I, that was the one that I'm like, and listen, I know you moved Riley Patterson and brought in Bagley, but you, you got to feel good about your guy going up, up there to kick. It just, that decision to me was baffling. But you got to give credit to the 49ers. You know, I thought Christian McCaffrey had some of the best seven-yard runs ever. I, I, like, it just, watching this man operate is absolutely incredible. Uh, but Brock Purdy, again, when you had to have it, he made the throws. Now, and, and the runs. Against man coverage. Like, that to me, the bigger killer than Dan Campbell's fourth down decisions were just 
the Lions falling apart in the third quarter. I mean, the ball bouncing off a of face mask that should be an interception leads to the 49ers' biggest play. Dr several drop passes, okay, one of which would have been a huge third down conversion. I think it was to Reynolds. A one-play drive that resulted in a fumble, which something happened on the exchange from the very beginning. That's I don't what know it looked if like. Gibbs or Goff went the wrong way. You know, and then you follow that up with another three-play drive that's a three and out that goes nowhere. Uh, and then playing man coverage on the on the back end the whole time where Brock Purdy just scrambles and, and tears you apart. Yeah, and again, Brock's not the most fleet of foot, but he does run well enough. It's he's not as fast as Patrick. Like Mahomes can make you pay. He made he made uh, uh, the Ravens pay a couple times because the Ravens run a lot of man, obviously in the back end, and, and he was able to find some some alleys there. But I just thought Brock again, man, just it's not flashy, it's not super sexy, but it always seems to work. And now. He is playing in a Super Bowl, and we get a rematch uh, of the Super Bowl that we had a couple years ago. YouTube, what's up? You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Turn that notification bell on. Hit that like button, and keep telling your friends about it. We appreciate it.